Today we're going to be talking about neutral density or ND filters and how they can help you make more cinematic footage on cameras such as a GoPro. So first of all, what is a neutral density filter? Well, an ND filter goes on the front of your lens like this and it reduces the amount of light entering your lens. Most cameras max out their settings and can really struggle to even out the light in a scene. Think of an ultra sunny day on the beach in Hawaii or in Florida when your camera is on auto settings and you're still getting a slightly blown out picture. Picture. If this is happening, then you need an ND filter to help. For photography, an ND filter can help you get super silky smooth waterfall images or motion blur in broad daylight. And for videography, ND filters also help you get some motion blur. And before you say, wait a minute, why would I want a blurry video? Let's take a look at these two clips and tell me if you notice anything about the movement of the waterfall. So typically you don't want a super blurry video, but you want a small degree of motion blur, especially if you're filming a fast moving subject. If you don't have the motion blur, then your fast moving subject is gonna look kind of funky, kind of like it's being in fast forward or in high speed. This whole argument for motion blur can be really subtle, so it's not necessarily a make or break situation, but if you wanna shoot cinematic video, then having that little motion blur is pretty key to cinematics. So what defines a cinematic video anyway? This is actually a really Good question and if you guys have any ideas about what cinematics mean then I'd love to hear your definition in the comments below but in general I feel like it's a super general term and basically cinematic video is a look and the feel of a film to make it look like a Hollywood movie. So there's all different kinds of elements that make your film more cinematic, but a really key part of that are the camera settings. So typically if you're shooting a cinematic video, then you want your camera to be on manual mode and you want your shutter speed to be double that of your frame rate. So if your frame rate is 30 frames per second, your shutter speed should be at 1 60th. And if it's at 24 frames per second, then your shutter speed should be at 1 48th. However, in most cases, if you were to take your camera and put it on manual and have your shutter speed be at 1 1 60th or 1 48th of a second, you'll probably notice that your image looks really blown out. You may not be able to see anything at all. All right, this is testing out the cinematic settings and obviously this looks really blown out, but that's because our settings are on manual. So the shutter speed is now at 1 48th of a second, ISO minimum 100, ISO maximum 400, and it is way too sunny for that. But that is why we use ND filters in a case like this. So this is a cinematic setting on the Hero 9 4 4K 24 frames per second, linear with horizon leveling on. And this is usually because there's just too much ambient lighting out there. So you need an ND or neutral density filter to block out some of that lighting so that you can maintain that lower shutter speed. I'm gonna do a little walk around and see if you can see a difference in the frame rate and how those filters and the manual shutter speeds are affecting the resulting videos. This is a forward test, forward facing video. So when it comes to GoPro, you actually have several different ND filter options. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is also one that you can use on a mirrorless camera lens or a DSLR camera lens. This is a circular variable ND filter. So when you twist it around, the neutral density power is changing. It can be stronger or less strong depending on how you twist this filter. And in most cases, you definitely want a variable ND filter because your light conditions are often changing. If you happen to be in a set or some place where your lighting conditions are constant, then you probably don't need to worry about having a variable ND filter. But for most of us that work with natural lighting that's changing all the time, then it, a variable ND filter is the best way to respond to the changing lighting conditions without having to change your camera settings. So this is a 52 millimeter filter and it's intended to be used on interchangeable lens cameras. But I'm using it on the GoPro thanks to this little adapter made by Ulanzi. This is a super helpful GoPro accessory. If you have any of these little filters lying around that you happen to have bought for another lens that you were using, or the nice thing is these filters made for cameras are super cheap relative to GoPro filters. So you can just buy this 52 millimeter filter and be able to use it interchangeably on GoPros as long as you have the adapter that fits the GoPro that you're trying to use. The other really great thing is that you can also swap this out for a circular polarizer 
or a graduated neutral density filter, any kind of filter that has a 52 millimeter thread. And there's quite a few of them out there and they're all pretty reasonably priced. So you have some pretty great flexibility if you go with this style of ND filter for your GoPro. However, if you're looking for something more fitted for your GoPro, you can go for a filter option such as those made by Polar Pro. So Polar Pro, and there's another brand named Freewell, they make these little filters that actually replace the front lens of your GoPro. This is only true for certain GoPros. The only GoPro it's not true for is the Hero 8 because the Hero 8, you unfortunately cannot remove the front GoPro lens. These filters are super high quality. The glass is really, really nice. And I didn't notice any lens flares or excessive noise coming from those filters. So I think they're really, really worth it. You can also use these filters along with the GoPro Media Mod and other accessories, they don't get in the way. Probably the only trade-off with these filters are that number one, they're a little pricey, especially the Polar Pro versions. They cost a lot of money and you also have to change them out whenever you get a new GoPro because for the last three GoPro models at least, the filter sizes have been different. So you might have to change them out if you ever choose to upgrade your GoPro. Another downside is that it takes some extra time to change out the filter. You have to take off the filter and have the actual lens exposed and that can be a little nerve-wracking especially if you're doing some adventure traveling out with dirt or sand around so you have to be pretty careful it's not a very quick process to change those filters out so if you don't want to physically take off your filter and expose your lens there's another option out there made by Telesyn so these are super high quality as well the glass is really nice and the frame is metal and if you ever want to put this on your GoPro all you have to do is stick this filter over the existing filter on your GoPro. And now we have a GoPro with an ND filter on it. The only possible downside to using filters this way is that now your GoPro is having to film through two filters. You have the original filter that the GoPro came with, and now you're adding a secondary filter on top of it. So that could mess with your quality just a little bit. This setup is also very dubiously waterproof. You could stick the whole camera in water like this and it would be okay, it wouldn't damage your camera, but I'm not sure that there's a water tight seal between the Telesyn filter and the GoPro filter. So there is a really good chance you could get water between the two filters. And that's a big difference from the Polar Pro. If you put the Polar Pro filter on top of your GoPro, then your camera is still waterproof and you can use your camera underwater with that ND filter attached. But other than that, the Telesyn is a really great deal. The price is a lot lower than the Polar Pros and you can also use this filter along with the GoPro and the Media Mod. You also get a CPL or a circular polarizer with the Telesyn bundle, which is different from the Polar Pro because that one does not include a polarizer. And since we're on the subject, ND filters and polarizers are really similar, but they're also slightly different. So both of these filters go on the front of your lens and they kind of act as sunglasses for your camera by filtering out the amount of light that's hitting your camera's sensor. ND filters can be super strong. They can actually get to a point of blocking out all of the light, but polarizers just block out light from a reflected surface, such as glass or water. So if you're ever filming at the beach or a lake or somewhere where you have a lot of reflected light, then you definitely want to use a polarizer. And that's all I have to say about ND filters today and filming with GoPros. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content relating to GoPros and filming and taking photos, and I'll see you in the next video.